Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely Friday. So, I kind of feel like a bit of a bum today. Can you tell? I'll give you a second. I didn't shave. I usually shave every single day. I don't think I've gone a day without shaving in like 10 years or so. It's incredibly horrible, like the itchiness I feel after two or three days of not shaving. It's just, ah, get this crap off of me. But I was being a bum today and I didn't shave. So, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of look like a bit like a bum. But I like it. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll stop shaving altogether. So what I wanted to discuss today is this little piece of news in New York. It says, with Omicron fading, Hochul, the governor, renews calls for workers to return to the office. So she's asking people to go back to the office and saying, I really do want everybody back in their offices. Just want to say that. We thrive more when everyone comes back in person, but I'll cut you slack just a little bit longer, she said. And I think that the, uh, the inter- obviously what this is, is uh, we get more tax revenue when the property owners are able to pay their property tax because people are paying rent. So go back to work, even though remote work is clearly working. Uh, I think this is going to be a difficult sell because people, they're very adaptive to change if you force them into change. You know, one of the things that I've said on this channel is that there are many companies that were averse to remote work because remote management is difficult. It is hard. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why don't they just let us work? Well, listen, remote management is is tricky. It is difficult. It is a new skill set that you have to learn. And if you have a company that's profitable, that has good profit margins, can pay everybody decently, then it really is kind of weird to just, you know, toss everything aside and try something that's radically different. But if you're forced to, you're forced to learn how to do that, then once you actually have learned that skill under duress, why not use it to save $10,000, $20,000, $80,000, $300,000 a month on rent? But further, even for the people that are not in that mindset, there may simply be people that think, I know how to do my job at home. Am I going back to work for me or am I going back to work in the office for you? And I think that's an important question for a lot of workers of many of these companies to ask themselves. If they were able to do their job 100% from home, then why are you asking me to commute into a very, very overpopulated, overpriced location and, you know, just jam up the streets, jam up the subways and everything else when I could do my job from home? You see, you know, when, when you break the inertia in that way, it's really difficult to go back to the way things were, particularly if things are actually working better right now than the way that they were before. I personally don't believe this has anything to do with everybody thriving, and I think that it's fairly transparent for anybody watching. I think that you want the ability to turn the economy on and off like a light switch and screw with people's businesses whenever you feel like, and then simultaneously ensure that everything goes back to normal so we can make back all the money that we didn't make while all of these offices sat on rented. Well, too fucking bad. I mean, many of these businesses figured out how to operate without having to deal with a crowded subway, without having to deal with paying $300,000 a month in rent, without having to deal with all of the aggravations that come into play when you have a lot of people being collected into a central office location. And the people and the managers and the business owners that figured out how to operate outside of that environment need a reason to come back. And you're going to have to do a little bit better than that's how we all thrive. You're going to have to uh, sweeten the pot in some way, shape, or form to get all those people that are now saving money, that are actually able to relax in their own home where they have more space than they did before and everything else, to decide to be here. Because don't get me wrong, a lot of people are going to come back because they like the New York City environment. But a lot of people were never really here because they loved the environment. They were here because this is where their money was. And now that they're actually in a better financial position and spending less time commuting working somewhere else, well... (laughs) Sorry, this this you're gonna have to give me a little bit more than everybody thriving. You're gonna have to give me a little bit more than I want to plug this hole in the uh, property tax where we used to be able to expect thirty billion dollars out of you, and we're not gonna be able to expect thirty billion dollars out of you if all these landlords that don't have any paying tenants don't pay their property tax bills. This is not something that I'm facing where I work because we never changed. The biggest change that we made is mildly adjusting the desk in the front so that we were a little bit further away from people who were coming in. We had people wearing masks and we had a giant annoying air filter in the front that's really obnoxious and aggravating to listen to. But other other than that, 
there were no real large scale changes made here. And this is just fundamentally not really a work at home company. You know, everybody here kind of knows each other. Uh, they learn and from and play off of each other. Uh, a lot, some of the work is really aggravating to do, particularly if you're isolated. If you spend three hours on a motherboard chasing a problem and you don't fix it, that's really, really, really depressing. Not because you get paid on commission, but just, you know, like from a. Uh, depriving your brain of dopamine and serotonin place. It's like, it doesn't matter how many you fix successfully. I can't describe it. When you have two or three in a row with PM sleep S5L missing or that just start randomly crashing when you're done, it depresses your soul. And the way that we deal with that at this company is, you know, screw around from time to time. You know, we have had, you know, you know jumping contests over here uh, to see who can get the post at highest. We have had, uh, you know, weightlifting contests, which Dan kicked the crap out of me in. Uh, here, Paul dressed up as a cat. Here, I'm shooting Steve in the dick with a uh, with with a Nerf gun. I mean, like you know, everybody here has their own method of blowing off steam. You know, there's a, a little basketball hoop that they play with. Everybody here has their own method of blowing off steam, and because many of the people here are good friends outside of work, they're able to bring that to the office and kind of work off of each other, and also just you know be able to separate. Okay, I had four hours of misery. Let's screw around for 15 minutes just so that I don't lose my mind before I go back to work. So here, if that if every single person were working from home, aside the fact that I just the logistics of getting uh, 12 different people their assignments and physically bringing it to them, and then if another tech has to work on it, physically bringing it to them would be absolutely horrible and eat up all the profit margin in the business. Aside from that, I think it would actually be a more depressing environment uh, when, you're, when you're dealing with this. It's such a collaborative element uh, of, of working in person to this type of company. So I don't really have to think about this too much. And also the people here, for the most part, just are really just they're back to a normal life. I mean, uh, we we took our masks off when almost everybody was vaccinated in June, and um, that that's been that. Uh, but I, I, you know, a lot of companies are most are likely going to ask these questions: Are we coming back for our benefit, or are we going back for your benefit? And as I mentioned in a couple of uh, recent videos that I did, I went over some of the uh, of, of the state budget. And one of the things that you see in the state budget in New York City is that a lot of that budget comes from uh, from property tax. A really good portion of New York State's budget comes from property tax. You can see it here on the Comptroller's website. I'll put a link to this executive summary down below. General property tax is a big part of the financial plan for the future. And one of the things that I've went over a lot on this channel is the real estate cost uh, and just being astronomical. I went over it when I was looking for a new store. And every now and then I'll just do one of these videos walking down the block and showing you all the places that are empty, all the stores that are empty. And, um, you know, one of the things that I think politicians are going to start learning is that you really just can't turn business on and off like a light switch. A, a, a business is not a light switch. People are not light switches. You know, an economy is not a light switch. You, you can't just do this and then that, this and then that. It doesn't work like that. Uh, you know, there was this one study that I was reading a while ago, and it was talking about how in areas where they had got lifted COVID restrictions a little bit sooner, that economic activity did not return as quickly as people anticipated from areas that had harsher restrictions. And one of the things that, you know, I've, I've always read this and I thought, well, no shit. I mean, if you like, you know, if, if, if you stab somebody in the leg and you stab two people on the leg and this guy, you take the knife out 20 minutes before that guy, they're, they're like, neither of them are likely going to be running a race because you, you stabbed them in the leg. Um, it, it's very difficult to just turn these things back on. Getting people to show up, uh, you know, the, the finances of it, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the customer base, just the, the procedures that you had, you adapt to, to, to your new environment and you don't just immediately literally go back to exactly how things were before. It's not that simple. And I think that members of both city and state government that are concerned that maybe all of these empty places are not going to be able to pay the astronomical property tax that makes a city or a state like New York uh, able to be viable with the budget that it has are going to come into a stark realization that not everybody is going to come back and they're not going to come back simply because you tell them for both reasons. A, I've moved on. I've created a life for myself or a, com or a way to work that does not screw me simply because the economy gets turned on and off like a light switch. Or B, you may actually have people that are in perpetual concern, concerned fear for the future. Because again, like really, think about this. If the benchmark was, quote, if it saves you only one life, 
I mean, again, you had, you had Delta, you had Omicron. Like, are, are you really will, if, if you are obeying every single mandate, every single suggestion, every single guideline, are you really willing to tell everybody to come back to the office if your business is the type of business that is going to immediately shut down if a new variant comes out? If the PP bus variant comes out in April, Okay, so you, you got everybody working from home and you did all the work necessary to make that work and everything's good. And now you're going to do all the work to, okay, never mind, changing a dime, everybody come back. Are you willing in April or May or June when they say, okay, never mind, here are all the different uh, guidelines and restrictions and so on and so forth. Are you, like, are, are you going to tell them all to go back home? Because I mean, I think there may be people that went through the, uh, you know, Delta, then no, then Omicron, then no, that are going to say, you know what? Everybody can work from home. Fuck it. And another thing that I think is going to be difficult here is getting people to come back due to the rhetoric that was used two years ago. The, the, the reason that I was against a lot of the rhetoric being used, it wasn't because I had a problem wearing a mask in the beginning of the pandemic. It wasn't because I had a problem with getting a vaccine. It was the, quote, if it saves only one life rhetoric because we don't apply that to anything else. And it's going to make it very difficult to get people to consider going back to the way things were before. So I remember in June of last year when they were suggesting that if you're fully vaccinated and others are fully vaccinated, then why don't you take your mask off and, and do that indoors. Now, before we had news of the new Delta variants coming in and absolutely just, you know, game stopping the case rate, before there was news of that, there were still a lot of people that thought, well, wait a second, what made today different from yesterday? So if yesterday was, if it saves even only one life day, what makes yesterday that much different from today? Because it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, it's a curve. But what makes this day on the curve that much different? I'm not changing. I'm doing what I was before. And that's what I've noticed. And then particularly when you had Delta come out, right after they said you can take off your mass indoors if you're fully vaccinated, um, that kind of, I imagine, emboldened people that said, no, I don't want to go back to normal yet to not go back to normal. And then when, you know, that was done with, people were kind of on edge. And then you had Omicron, which was like, um, spiked up a lot. And uh, now I, I imagine that there are people that are like, I mean, I don't want to go back to my office. What if there's a next one after Omicron? I mean, because if there was, you know, you had COVID, you had COVID of winter of 2020, then it's like, okay, we think we're done. Oh, never mind, there's another variant. Okay, we think we're done. Oh, never mind, there's another variant. There's going to be a lot of people, I think, that are concerned about another variant. And they are maybe still in that mindset of, quote, if it saves even one life. They're going to save a lot of money doing that too. I'm really curious to see what that will wind up doing uh, to the city and to the state. I'm really curious to see uh, what the real estate here is going to look like. I'm not going to see much of it. I'm also curious what you all think in the comments. If you run a company specifically in a place like New York City and you have a large office, I'm very curious. Is this part of your decision-making process? Is this part of your, your thought process? Are you thinking to yourselves, I'm not going to come back simply because the governor wants us all to come back uh, just to have to turn on a dime when, when there's a new variant? Again, here it's a little bit different. I know how the people here feel about their work. I know how they feel about the virus to some extent. And I mean, just we're, we're not like, I'm, well, this is not the type of business where everybody's going to say, oh my God, I can't show up because there is the, you know, the PP bus variant coming out tomorrow. But if I had a business that was run in that, in that fashion, if I had a business where that was part of the culture of the company and the people that work there, I, I wouldn't really want to bring people back. I, I wouldn't be returning to it at all. I mean, that seems like, um, yeah, because you really don't have control over what's going to happen two to four months from now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. I am going to go out with some friends and enjoy my Friday night with my unshaven face. And I hope you all have a lovely Friday evening as well. See you all in the next video. Bye now.